Well, you've shown me how to produce a sine curve through a musical note, but what does it mean mathematically? We tend to think of the sine curve as coming from a circle mathematically. Um, let's, if I can just show you using the Boron here. Um, the Boron is, of course, a circle, and if you imagine a diameter running across here, and then imagine a point that travels round the circumference of the Boron, round and round, and we take measurements of its height at each point. So, for instance, the height is zero there. It's on the diameter. Here, that's the measurement of height. Here, that's the measurement of height, and so on. So it reaches a maximum here, then it comes back to zero, then a minimum here, and then back to zero. And if you were to plot those heights against the angle that it makes at each stage, the graph that you would get would, it would start at zero, then reach a maximum, go through zero, reach a minimum, go through, and so on. And that gives you your sine curve. And that's curve, the sine yeah. curve. That's where the sine curve comes from, yes. The mathematical origins of a sine curve may become clearer if shown graphically. A circle with a diameter, movable point P. As point P moves anti-clockwise around the circumference of the circle, it moves further from the diameter line until it reaches a maximum at the top of the circle. It then returns to the diameter line and reaches a minimum at the bottom of the circle before returning to the line once again. Here are two measures that can be taken as P moves around the circle. The distance from P to the diameter line and the angle that P makes at the centre of the circle in degrees. Plotting one against the other at each stage produces the sine curve. Now you're talking there about angles. Presumably you're measuring them in degrees, are you? You can do, yes. Uh, at the angle here is zero. If you, if you come up to the top of the clock, that's a right angle, so the angle is 90, 90. degrees. So it goes zero, 90, 180, 270, 360. But you don't have to measure them in degrees, and in fact mathematicians prefer to use a different measurement called radians. Does that come from radius? It does, yes. Uh, let's, I've got a little bit of ribbon here. If I mark off the length of the radius there, and then if I were to put that on the circumference, like that, right. it makes an arc, and the length of that arc marked off to the centre it gives you an angle. Like that. That angle. Yeah. That angle is one radian. It's about 57 degrees, something like that. You can think of it as little chunks of Dairy Lee cheese. <laughs> there are roughly six of them. The radian is derived from the radius. The length of the radius, when placed on the circumference of the circle, forms an arc. The angle that this arc makes with the centre of the circle is called one radian, which is approximately 57 degrees. Use this arc length to step around the circumference and it will go six times with a little bit left over. More exactly, the arc will go around the circle two pi times, which is about 6.28 times. When explaining the origins of the sine curve mathematically, we plotted the movements of point P against the angle measured in degrees. If the angle is measured in radians, it looks like this. Exactly the same curve but with a different scale on the horizontal axis.